Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome to the last episode in our Applied Energistics tutorial series. That's right, we're going to cover the last couple of little bits and bobs, and then we're done. So yeah, Applied Energistics not an enormous mod pack, it's just very powerful. So we've got four uh, more things to talk about, and as well as a couple of additional stuff, and then we're done. So, the four things we're going to talk about mainly are the uh, portable cell, the interface terminal, the storage monitor, because amazingly I haven't talked about that yet, and the view cell. Okay, so let's go through these in order. The portable cell is probably the simplest thing, and the name should tell you what it does. To craft it, you simply need a ME chest, a 1K ME storage component, and an energy cell. And then you have to charge it in a charger. Once it's charged, you can hold it in your hand, right-click to open it, and then put stuff inside basically a backpack okay for apply our logistics it does use power when it's opened it doesn't drain power uh, all the time only when you're actually interacting with it okay so if I open it and close it it's drained some power it can only hold 512 bytes and only 27 types so it can only hold half as many types as a standard cell I mean half as it can only hold half as much uh, overall data as a standard cell I mean, one case cell, so it's a bit of a downgrade, but it's helpful to be able to carry it around. Um, as with other cells, it can be put into an MEIO port if you wanted to transfer things from the network to the cell. So now I've transferred a bunch of stuff to the cell, and I can open it and interact with it out in the world. I Mostly, I think you'd be using it the other way. So if you get back from a hard day's work of mining and you've stored a bunch of stuff in your portable cell, you can stick it in the MEIO port and transfer it all into the network. Quite useful. Just remember, it does use power, uh, not extremely quickly, but uh, if you're gone for a very long time and you're using this a lot, keep an eye on the power, because once it hits zero, you can't open it until you recharge it. All right, so that's the portable cell. Pretty straightforward, but it could be useful. Um, there are mods that add other cheaper backpacks, but uh, it's kind of neat. Okay, so next thing on the topping block, the interface terminal. This is an interesting one. One that I... Stupid darkness. One that I've actually uh, haven't used, um, but we're going to take a look at it. So to craft this interface terminal, you need an engineering processor, an ME interface, and an illuminated panel. So what does this do exactly? Well, if we go and open this ME interface terminal, we'll see that there's absolutely nothing in it. And that's because we don't have any interfaces on this particular network. So if I come over here and we'll just pull out some cable and add a couple of interfaces. We'll add maybe four interfaces as long as there's enough channels there. Yeah, of course there is. Now when we go in here, we can see that there are four interface terminals and it says nothing. Okay. Well, what does it mean by nothing? Well, what this is for is patterns. All right, so we can take patterns, as you know, you can put patterns into these ME interfaces in order to auto-craft stuff. The interface terminal allows you to see all of the patterns that are currently in um, all the interfaces connected to your network. And if you were to rename uh, one or more of these interfaces by putting them in an anvil, for example, I'll name this ME interface, and I'll name it, I don't know, test. And of course, you can also use the inscriber for this, but you would have to make an inscriber nameplate. Pop that there. And now, test shows up down here on the list. Okay? So, what the interface terminal allows you to do is keep track of your interfaces, keep track of what's in your interfaces, what patterns are in there. So it, it, it's going to be quite useful if you've got a large network, if you've got a large auto-crafting setup with a lot of interfaces, which is why I would highly recommend naming your interfaces if, uh, as to what machines and stuff that you've attached them to, because uh, that'll help you to uh, keep track of them by using the interface terminal. So actually quite useful when you, have, when you get to a very large um, setup. You can also use this little box to search for by name uh, uh, your interface terminals. 
So there you go. That's the interface terminal. Quite useful. Next we have the storage monitor. Now, I should have talked about this ages ago. It's very simple, but quite useful. All it is is an ME level emitter and an illuminated panel. Now, this is what it looks like when you first stick it down. Well, what does it do? Well, it displays how much you have of a given item. Okay, So you can use these to keep track at a glance how much you have of very important things. Um, for example, uh, cake. Perhaps you want to keep track of how much delicious cake is in your network. Simply hold the item in your hand, right click it on the monitor, and you will program the monitor to keep track of how much cake is in your network. Now I've currently got 16 cake in the network and now it's gone ahead and updated and it's telling me that there is 16 cake. If I take 8 cake out, it'll go down to 8. If I put the cake back in, it goes back up to 16. So this could be useful if you are um, storing some, some items that are very important. I'm talking things like maybe fuel for uh, nuclear reactors or, or coolant or if you've got a resource that it's very, very important that you keep a certain supply of, uh, the storage monitor can be useful. I mean, they're not that expensive, so you could use these quite liberally, but uh, I'd probably use them a bit more sparingly around the place. Otherwise, your base ends up looking like a gaudy show of monitors everywhere. But yeah, you can use this to keep track of items without having to go inside of your system and look it up. You can just look on a wall or wherever you're at, look at it, and, oh, okay, I got that many. Great. And if you right-click it with an empty hand, you can get rid of what it's currently programmed to display. So that's the storage monitor. Very simple. Now you've got the view cell, which is very, very interesting. I've never used it personally, but I think I may end up using it if I eventually build an AE system in the um, Revolution Let's Play, if it goes long enough and if I get that far. So the view cell is very cheap. It's three iron ingots, one charged Certus Quartz crystal. It has to be charged. Three iron uh, redstone dusts and two quartz glass creates you a view cell. Now you can't, there's no internal inventory. You can't shift right click the thing. So what does it do? Well, it interacts with ME terminals. Okay. But to use it, you need a cell workbench. So if you remember back to our cell workbench episode, you remember that you can take a storage cell and stick it in the cell workbench in order to apply upgrades or to partition it to only store certain items. However, what the view cell does is it partitions this with dis with the display uh, settings. What am I talking about here? Well, let me grab a couple of things. So let's say you, you've got a, a lot of stuff in your ME system, an absolute crap ton from all kinds of different mods. Your list continues down for a mile and a half, and every time you go into it, you struggle to find what you need. you got to type it up in the search bar, and it's just a, a pain. Um, so what you could do is go into a, get a view cell, put it in a cell workbench and tell this, the cell, okay, I want you to be, I, I want to look up mystical white flowers from Britannia and redstone from Minecraft. I know that's not particularly useful combination, but imagine that you went into your view cell and you programmed it with a bunch of stuff from one particular mod that you just used all the time, like Thumbcraft or Britannia or Chromaticraft, whatever it was. Okay. Now that you've got that in there. Take the view cell out. It'll be partitioned with that. Go into any ME terminal. Stick that in the upgrade slots. And suddenly, this terminal is only displaying those two things. Now, nothing has changed about our ME network. We, we still have all of these items in it. If I put another terminal on here, we can see all the items. But what this view cell does is it tells this particular terminal to only show us the items that are in it. Okay. Now, if you looked carefully, you may have noticed that in the upper left corner of this uh, terminal, it doesn't say terminal anymore. It says Britannia. That's because you can name terminals. So if I stick a terminal in here, I've got this one that says Britannia, and I give it a name, for example, Rotarycraft. And I've got this terminal called Rotarycraft. If I was to place this on here, and then I could put a view cell in it to only display certain rotary craft items. And then I could go in here and, oh, it says rotary craft and only my rotary craft items are showing up. Obviously, I don't have any rotary craft items in here, so I can't really show you that. But that's the main idea of behind the view cell. 
So you could have a wall of terminals. You could put signs on them to let you know which one each one is. And if you wanted to interact with that specific mod or that specific set of items, you could use the view cell and you wouldn't have to be bothered with all the other items in your network appearing. So that's pretty useful when you have an enormous AE system that's just loaded with all kinds of crap. Now there's a couple more things that we can talk about here. Um, upgrades are a topic that we haven't gone through exhaustively. There are a couple more cards here that I haven't mentioned before. The redstone card, the inverter card, and the acceleration card. Now most of the cards are very self-explanatory in what they do and these ones shouldn't be any different. The redstone card, which is crafted quite simply with a card and a redstone torch, all it does is it allows ME fluid import and export buses, ME IO ports, and ME import export buses to be controlled via a redstone signal. The inverter card allows you to take, which is crafted with a redstone torch and an advanced card, um, allows you to make the ME fluid storage buses, the ME formation planes, the ME gas storage bus, the ME storage bus, the ME storage cells, the matter cannon, the view cell, all these different things. It changes them from a white list to a black list. So let me grab this view cell out. This view cell is currently programmed, remember, to only show me mystical white flowers and redstone. However, if I go into the cell workbench and I stick an inverter card in it, and I stick this back in here, Instead of only showing me those things, it is now showing me everything but those things. So that is what the inverter card does. It simply reverses the filter from a whitelist to a blacklist. So that could be very useful, maybe. And then the acceleration card, which is crafted with a pure Fluix crystal and an advanced card. Simply put, you stick this in any of these machines, and it will speed them up. There's a number next to each machine. That's telling you how many of these you can put in it, I believe. Uh, you, if you want the machine to run quicker, you place in an acceleration card, and I do believe that it causes them to require more power as well. You don't just get free speed upgrades, but that's what that does. So we've basically now covered everything in Applied Energistics 2. I don't believe I've missed anything critical. If there is anything that I didn't cover, it's because it was just super basic and there was no need. So I hope you've enjoyed our Applied Energistics that our Applied Energistics tutorial series. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes. Now that this uh, Tuesday slot is open, I'm going to be working on uh, some more stuff. So there may not be an upload on for the next couple of Tuesdays, depending on how long it takes to put together. Um, or I might replace it with some new series almost immediately. Who knows? Um, but anyway, thanks for watching this series. And uh, stay tuned for future tutorial series. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.